The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Werner Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today I'm down at the Ontario Agricultural Conference and we're going to talk about fungicides with Omafra plant pathologist Albert Tenuta and his neighbor in Rodney, Ontario, Mike Miller, Miller Family Farms. Gentlemen, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank Pleasure you. to be here. Great. Now, um, let's talk about tar spot and I want to talk about what happened on your farm in a second this year, Mike. But Albert, how did the year unfold? What type of pressure do we see this year and why? Well, we've seen over the past three years that Ontario, and particularly the North Shore where Mike is and in that Rodney area, and that is, is pretty consistent in North America in terms of having tar spot quite consistently in that. It started off a little on the slower side this year, but then really started wrapping up post tasseling in that. We had that extended fall, which was ideal for the continued development of tar spot. So we saw a lot of impact later than what we've seen in 2021 and 2022. Yeah. Um, Mike, tell us a little bit about your farm and what you saw from a tar spot perspective this year and some pretty impressive results from fungicides. Yeah, so we farm, uh, our main uh, operation is south of Rodney. Uh, we have an egg laying operation and we also do, uh, do cash crop. Um, we're mainly a corn uh, based production farm. We probably farm about 75 to 80 percent of our acres in, uh, in corn, so we're, we're pretty heavily invested in that. and. Um, yeah, this year we saw a, a huge response, uh, anywhere from 15 up to 70 plus bushels, uh, depending on hybrids. So, yeah, and talk yeah. about that. I mean, so so 15 to 70 plus. Um, you, you say hybrid selection is a big part of your strategy. You know, you know what holds up and what doesn't. Yeah, so it, it kind of varies. Uh, like a lot of the time we're trying to find tolerant varieties and obviously that is a major factor but we're still looking for yield and uh, so we kind of plant a balance of uh, both susceptible varieties that still hold really good yield potential with treatment and we're also looking for a certain amount of acres that have good good tolerance in case we don't get to those acres in time so tell me about your trials this year um, he's got some impressive results you've seen this those same type of results in your trials? Yeah, I know, it's very similar and you know, probably the highest uh, differences we've seen this year, particularly in the timing side of things as well. So we saw anything from 15 bushels up to 80, 90 bushels. Oh. So uh, of course, hybrid and fungicide and application are critically important to that. Yeah. And timing is a big part of this. Uh, Mike, uh, VT, uh, R1, uh, a critical timing for you? Yeah, we're still trying to hit that, uh, that timing stage. It's it's where we find the most benefit in terms of both yield, uh, quality for dawn suppression uh, with that triazole, and uh, it's also a good time to hit cutworm because uh, we're, we're still dealing with that, maybe not to the same extent, but uh, yeah, VT is definitely the, the time to try and target. So. Now you tried two pass this year. I think you came back about 15 days later. What did you see there um, You know, with the two pass? Yeah, so we saw about a fifth, or no, it was nine bushels uh, response to that second app, and that was also a premium fungicide, so the cost was there as well, but yeah, we did see about nine bushels uh, response in a susceptible variety. So. You tell me about um, what you, you're seeing, um, that VT uh, R1 still holding up in your troughs? Oh yeah, it's still, it's the go-to app for Ontario. It's been the most consistent, most uniform. Um, consistency not only here but elsewhere in the US as well in the Midwest so it's hard to go away from you know, like Mike you know Dawn, Gibrell ear rot you know with the barn there keeping the corn marketing the corn all of those things are critically important and I don't think we can go away from that VTR one so a lot of the work around what we're doing Mike's doing and others is trying to see depending on the year do we bring in a second application whether you do it earlier or later is critically important yeah. I want to talk about products with you in a second, but I want to come back and talk about Rainfast. Um, some interesting work that you did about applying fungicides before and after rain. Some pretty cool results. Yeah, so we had a day in a fairly large block, uh, about 250 acre field, and I was spraying and uh, watching the weather pretty closely and, and did happen to get a pop-up shower that came up and I got rained out uh, while I was spraying. So I ended up sitting for about an hour um, and then I went back and and doubled up on a few acres just to make sure that those acres got covered in case the fungicide got washed off. And it was just startling to see right down to the line where that break was. Um, 
So but, but on an hour before uh, yep. or, or within an hour and even um, applying after rain. Yeah. Yep. So the, the after rain uh, yields were definitely 10 to 15 bushels better, which surprised <coughs> me on that greater than an hour rain fast. I was surprised to see see that. Wow. So yeah. it was pretty interesting. Got to think timing right down to the hour. Back to you. Um, you've Again, you've done your trials on different fungicides. Yep. Um, some interesting data. We'll throw it on the screen here right now. Um, what are you seeing? Well, again, you know, those consistent products, you know, for our trials, for Mike on the farm and that, you know, we still see the Viltima uh, Carumba or Viltima DLX. We see the Dolero Completes. We see the Marivis Neos are the ones that are still the most um, consistent. You mentioned premium products and those uh, from a tar spot perspective, you know, um, that Veltima Deluxe actually this year in terms of the timing was surprising too. You know, either that V12, V14 just pre-tassel, tassel, and then post-tassel, say out of the R3 three weeks later, was pretty consistent. You know, we saw a step up each time um, in there, and, and it, that was probably one of the critical learnings that we saw this year, and then other ones, other products could make that, but required two passes as well. So yeah. So um, back to you, Mike, um, based on this year, 2023, I know 2024 will be different. That's what Albert's going to tell us. What are you taking to the farm from a tar spot strategy next year? Uh, so obviously the one key element is hybrid selection. We've gone through it, and uh, that part has already been taken care of. So we, we're kind of placing those hybrids where we know we're going to be able to, to get them sprayed on time. And uh, yeah, beyond that, it's uh, being ready to spray fungicide and making sure equipment's in order and making sure that... Uh, you're monitoring that that time period that's critical uh, coming up to tassel. So one question for you, Mike, and that is, you know, you said you're not afraid to plant hybrids that are less tolerant if they got big yield. If you're planning to spray, uh, maybe it's a confidence in the fungicide. How does that all come together for you? Yeah, so it, there's still a lot of varieties out there that if you don't spray them, just get hammered. Yeah. But the quality of these fungicides is allowing you to still grow a certain percentage of your acres to those hybrids. And we found that this year that some of the most susceptible hybrids were still performing right at the top. So, that, And that's critically important. Knowing how those hybrids perform can help you plan ahead, right? And, and Mike knows those ones. Um, and, and basically your program, your strategy is in place for them to maximize the yield from them. Albert, final question to you, and that is about next year. I mean, like, we've been uh, following this story since 2020. Yep. Um, it changes every year. Why do you tell growers about, you know, what to anticipate next year? Or is it, or, as I say, it's, it's here to stay, but what happens in 2024? It depends on where you are, right? So, you know, if we look at tar spot from a risk perspective here in eastern Ontario, it's not there yet. We are seeing it creep into, you know, that New York State, Pennsylvania. So it's not too far away. It just, you know, depends on the storm fronts and all that stuff. So be aware, as Mike said, just scout, be aware of what's going on during those critical period, growth stages of the corn crop in the season as well. If you're in that, you know, London North area, again, it's going to depend on the environmental conditions. Be aware of what's going on elsewhere. So in the Southwest, the U.S., we saw in 2021, where we really shouldn't have had a lot of tar spot, all that inoculum blowing into Ontario very early under favorable conditions set us up for that disease development. And we had a similar situation this year in 2023. So again, be aware of what's going on. It's here. And what we've seen every year has been different. And that's critically important. If it's going to be a drier year, hotter, drier year, likelihood is we're not going to see as much tar spot. If it's a year where we're worried about gibberell ear rot, white mold and that, those favorable conditions, then be on alert for tar spot. Great stuff, gentlemen. Um, Mike, Albert, thank you for stopping by. Um, appreciate your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time.